Let's revisit uh, the gradual release of responsibility model that, um, that we've talked about before. Um, that term is often associated with Pearson and Gallagher. Um, I like a, a kind of simpler version of it, the I, we, you model or approach to teaching. And this is something that is infused in just about every Keys to Literacy professional development program. It's something that we try to model with you as teachers, so as trainers, we're at the I stage being very explicit with you, modeling things. Um, we give you a chance to practice it. And eventually, we want you to independently start to use some of the practices with your students. But that's what we want to do for our students as well. So as we're teaching them some of the writing skills, some of the content writing uh, strategies, we want to bring them through this cycle. And as we introduce any new skill in this uh, collection of skills, so whether it be how you mark your text, how you take your two column notes, how you transfer the notes into writing. Um, we want to follow the best instructional practices represented in gradual relief. So the I stage represents, it's the teacher, the instructor, and the highlights for really good I instruction are modeling, and one of the ways we do that is by using think aloud. So we literally are talking through what's, what we're thinking about as we do each move in a skill that we're using. Um, a lot of explicit instruction, very systematic, so kind of breaking the skill down into its component pieces. But very quickly, we need to move to the we stage. Now, the we stage is really represents guided practice. So this is where now the students start to get to practice this stuff. But I want to emphasize the word guided practice, because if someone only sees something once and they start trying to use it and they use it wrong, they end up developing really bad habits unless they're given some feedback for how to fix those mistakes. So the we is about practice, but it's guided practice. And that guidance can come from the teacher, but it can also come from the students, um, their peer students. Guided practice can happen whole class. It can happen in small collaborative groups. Uh, as it relates to writing, we know that when kids have opportunities to work with their peers, to practice at the think or the plan or the write or the revise stage, um, their writing improves faster. Um, but it can also happen, <clears throat> let's say, for homework, but then they're given some feedback afterwards. What's our ultimate goal? Our, our ultimate goal is independent use by the students. Okay? Now, when we talk about uh, some big terms in education, differentiation, you know, scaffolding, right? How does that overlay to this? Well, what what's, we have to remember is that every student goes through these stages at different levels. So you may have some really advanced writers, some, you know, high flyers, we call them. You know, these are the kids that just get everything really. With just a little bit of explicitness, a little bit of guided practice, they're often running with this stuff, right? But you may have other students that really need to spend a lot more time here. Most of our students, even our struggling ones, can get to the independent use stage, right? It's just that they need so much more guided practice and support in order to do that. And that's where the scaffolds come in. If we uh, have got some students that very quickly understand how to take two column notes, well, we can just say, take two column notes. They do it on blank paper. If we've got some other students that aren't as on board, we might give them a set of partially scaffolded notes where maybe our main ideas are there or some of our details. Um, when we get to the part in the keys to content writing routine where we talk about using models and using scaffolds, that's where things like giving kids sets of steps or writing templates to complete. So that's all the kinds of scaffolding we do to help kids move from the we to the you. So I'd like to, you to just be um, keeping this in the back of your mind as you teach any of the elements in this routine. It, it's, it's more an awareness than anything else, but it is absolutely crucial if we want to get kids from thing, away from things being all teacher-centered uh, to eventually independent use by students.